Hey there, welcome back to another video. My name's Bruce and in this one I'm going to show you how to make a simple jigsaw puzzle tray. This is going to be used for when you're in the middle of working a big puzzle and you don't get finished but you want to work on it the next day but you don't need that sitting out on your table. Simply take this thing, store it under your couch, under your coffee table, whatever. Uh, pull it out the next day, work on it a little bit. My wife really loves working jigsaw puzzles and so she's always got one kind of going. Uh, this is something simple that her granddad made years ago and I'm gonna recreate it because she has a puzzle that won't quite fit on the one that he made for her. So let's build this thing. I got started by breaking down a piece of plywood with my track saw. It was one simple cut to size and then I was able to clean up the other sides to make sure they were square. This is a track saw. I know that's simple for some of you, but some people may not know about it. It's basically a circular saw that has a plunge base on it, so it can retract the blade when you're done with it. You put it on the track, plunge it down, make your cut, and you end up with a nice clean cut because of the supporting rail and just how it guides it. I've got some thin strips of walnut that are left over from a table build I did a while back, and I'm gonna use that for the edges of my puzzle tray. But I'm showing that you can take a simple 2x4 or 2x6 or anything you have laying around, use your track saw to cut off a thin strip that you can use for the border. It's pretty simple to do this. All you need to do is measure from the same edge, make a mark at each end of the piece you're gonna cut, and then line your track edge up with those marks. Then you just plunge the saw and make the cut. Track saws are a really great solution that I didn't have until about a year ago uh, for a lot of different projects. And part of why I like them is you can get multiple tracks. If you only have projects that you do that are short, you can buy shorter tracks. You can buy two tracks like this and put them together with a uh, track extender kit. The kit's inexpensive. You just have to buy another rail. There are a lot of solutions that this solves and uh, the setup and breakdown is pretty easy too. To cut your strips to length to use for the puzzle tray, just make a mark with a square to make sure that it's 90 degrees and then line your track up on it and make each of the cuts. For some of mine, I'm gonna move over to the miter saw, but I wanted to show you could accomplish it using the same tool. Now I'm moving on to sanding the thin strips of walnut I had left over from a table build. I'm going to be using these for the strips on the side of the puzzle tray. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm just gonna cut them down to size on the miter saw. Rather than trying to measure how long this piece needs to be, I'm just lining it up with one edge of the plywood and marking where the other edge of the plywood ends. For the side pieces, I'm just going to use referential measurements. It's gonna be easier than trying to measure this piece and mark a spot. So, uh, for the short edges, I have actually got these two already cut. I'm just making them end where the plywood ends. So that's perfect there. Now, to get the long piece measurement, what I have to do is I have to account for these pieces that will be on the short edges. So I'm just taking both of my short edge pieces, lining them up, and putting them right next to the plywood. And if I line up this piece on the edge of the plywood, now I can just use these two pieces as my reference mark and everything should be fine without having to measure. To keep with the simple theme of this build, I'm just using a cordless air gun and you can pick these up pretty cheap. I think this one costs about $150 and you can do all of the operations with this. So I added some quick set glue and I'm nailing on the side pieces into the plywood with inch and a quarter nails. Sometimes things don't go your way, and when you shoot a nail in here, you split it out. So I've got to try to repair that real quick, see what I can come up with. 
Anytime you're nailing really close to an edge, especially with a thin piece, there's a chance of it splitting out like this did. I really think this could have been prevented if I had used a 23 gauge pin nailer. I only have one of those that hooks up to my air compressor and keeping with the simple theme of this, I didn't want to introduce yet another nail gun that you might have to have to accomplish this. So if you use this gun, just go easy and try to not split it out like I did. I sanded off some of the glue squeeze out and just even up the sides and then I used a hand sander to just break the sharp edges. Depending on the finish you're using, there are multiple ways to mark your work, some of which are inexpensive such as making a stencil like this and kind of tagging your work with some spray paint, or you could even use a rubber stamp and just stamp on the bottom of it. For the finish, I decided to just see what I had left over from other projects to keep this project nice and cheap. I ended up having some brushing lacquer left over from a few other projects, so I grabbed a piece of a t-shirt and just wiped it on there. It really brings the wood grain to life, and I ended up only using one coat of this because it had a nice even look after I applied it. And remember that piece that I cut off of a two by six just to show you that you could use that as an alternative. Here are a couple of different paints and a stain that you could have used for the edge and really dress this up in a different way. Now it's time to add some handles. I picked up this hardware and needed to modify the bolts that screw into them because the material I have is really thin. They have a method that they describe to use some pliers to kind of bend the aluminum bolt back and forth and back and forth to break it, but I found it just as easy to use some grip strength and just clamp them with some pliers. I was able to nip off the end of the bolt since they're only aluminum and they fit perfectly. If you're not able to squeeze them hard enough to get them to break, an alternative would be to use a hacksaw and just cut the end off. Now it's time to lay out where I want the handles to be. What you need to do is mark the center of your board. Then you need to measure your handles and find what distance it is between the two holes. For mine, it was three inches. And so then you measure off of the center half of that distance for each. So for mine, it would be an inch and a half one way, an inch and a half the other way. And that's where I'm going to drill. Something to watch out for is I wanted to countersink the screws on the other side a little bit. So I drilled through with a small drill bit first so that from the inside of the tray, I could use a larger Forstner bit to create that countersink so that the screws would sit flush. Then I came back after I got that drilled with the correct size drill bit for the final bolt size. A quick test fit revealed that everything lined up just fine, so I took the handle back off, removed the tape, and then installed it permanently with a screwdriver. Then I just repeated all of those steps for the other side. My youngest came out and wanted to help a little bit in the shop, so I let him help me put some of these felt feet on here just so that when we're putting it on our coffee table and down on our wood floor, it doesn't scratch. Can I hold, hold it, hold it? Yeah. And you see how I stuck this one long? Yeah. Stuck it, stick it long, wait, right there, perfect. Stick it down, press it down hard. Yeah. Good, good job. This jigsaw puzzle tray is done. Let's check out some of those beauty shots.
Well, that's a wrap on this one, guys. Thanks so much for checking out this project. I like the way this turned out. This will get a ton of use in our house. Uh, we often sit this on our coffee table, which is wood, one that I made. So you saw I put these felt feet on here. That really helps not scratch things up then it can stow away under our couch. Big thanks to my wife's grandfather for coming up with this idea. Uh, we've used that one that he made for us for years, but we had a large puzzle and it needed a bigger one. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear down in the comments if you would have done anything differently, uh, maybe with some of the assembly or if you would have used different materials. Hopefully I showed you that you can do this project with some basic tools and basic materials if you want to. I happen to have some nicer materials laying around, so I use those. If you like this video, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you feel like it, I would love to have your support. Go to patreon.com slash Bruce A. Ulrich and become a patron of the show. It helps me make these videos. I've got quite a few folks over there helping me make these videos. Links to all of the tools and materials that I use will be down below. If you shop using those links, it helps me out a little bit. I get a little bit of a kickback in affiliate income from Amazon. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. That was too many takes. Happy puzzling. I don't even know if that's a thing.